This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today show are the Thrustmaster T LCM pedals. These are the newest, latest pedals from Thrustmaster, and for the first time ever, they feature a load cell brake pedal, and that is a significant upgrade. These pedals come in at about $200, and they are now available, and you can purchase them in the U.S. at least through the Amazon store. Check the Thrustmaster website for other locations. Again, they're a $200 standalone pedal set, meaning that you can actually plug them in with a USB cable directly into your PC. Now, they are also compatible with most Thrustmaster bases, and you can use a different cord and plug them into the bases and make maintain the compatibility with your console of the wheelbase. So a PS4 wheelbase is going to maintain its compatibility with these pedals. Now, same thing goes for the Xbox side of things as well. So we are doing things a little bit differently. This is a very live feeling review. I have some notes. I don't have a script. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants telling you everything that you're going to want to know about the TLCM pedals. But in addition to this video, we're also going to have accompanying videos to go into better detail or more detail on certain aspects. So for example, we have a different video that is going to show you the adjustments that you can make to really dial it in for you and what I chose setting wise. We talk about more detail on installing them and the different options there. And then we also talk about their new calibration tool, which is very cool. And the kind of settings that I put to get the most ideal settings for my testing. So all those videos will also be out and available. In addition to that, we have two other videos that are my first drive with the pedals after getting them dialed in my first drive, both doing it on the PC with a USB connection directly and also directly into the wheel, still on the PC, because that's where I like to race. Anyway, that takes you through what we've, we've been, what I've done for the testing and the other videos that we're gonna have available. Now, I also wanna talk about the magnitude of these pedals. If I were to go into my Wayback Machine, one other thing, before I get to my Wayback Machine, there will be some repetition. I might talk about the adjustment in installation during the review process, but again, if you want more detail, tune into those accompanying videos. So back to the Wayback Machine. If I were to go back in time to the very beginning days of sim racing, when we first went from racing on a keyboard or with a simple joystick, there were just very, very few companies that had sim racing gear made available with Thrustmaster being one of the first. That was the T1 racing wheel, the T2, and a, a whole line of wheels ever since. And they've really evolved their wheels to the point now that they are really pro level steering wheels. You're using a top of the line steering wheel from Thrustmaster, you've got yourself a great steering wheel. However, the Achilles heel of Thrustmaster in 2020 has been their pedals. Now their pedals have evolved since the days of the T1. Certainly they've gotten better with more progressive spring rates, more heavy duty, more substantial pedals, things like that. They've gone away from potentiometers and into their heart sensor, their Hall effect sensors or magnetic set sensors that go for millions of cycles compared to a potentiometer which blows out all the time. However, it was the load cell. At this point in 2020, very high-end pedals, $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 pedals are available and they'll feature things like load cells or even hydraulics, but they come at a mighty price. But to get with the times, Thrustmaster really needed a new pedal set. That brings us to the TLCM. Now, at $200, there's almost no comparison on the market for these pedals. They really don't have a competitor as an upgrade. So if you're sitting there on even a Logitech wheel, these are a great upgrade because they are USB uh, plug-in. Now, again, you'd have a wheel and a pedal set plugged in, two USBs, but you would be able to upgrade from Logitech pedals, which are certainly the Achilles heel of that wheel combination as well. So these are an upgrade for anybody who's on basically a potentiometer, a spring alone brake set pedal. And they're also an upgrade for those who just want to step up. If you already have Thrustmaster gear, you're just going to plug this in directly into your wheelbase and you're up and running. So it is a really significant moment for Thrustmaster after 20 years in sim racing and wanting to maintain that respect of being one of the leaders in our industry. So my hat's off to them. Now, let's talk a little bit about the details of what you've got here. Number one, you've got full metal arms. All three pedals, the arms themselves 
are these cool metal arms. Uh, they've got a cool machine look about them and they are very stiff and rigid. You've got metal pedal faces and that's really nice as well. And that leads down to a more of a plasticky type base and I'll give you some basic me measurements along with that traditional diamond plate-esque heel plate which is very thin but the pedal set is very substantial. It actually weighs in at 11 pounds so it is heavy duty it is heavy and you are going to want to hard mount it based on the weight and also the strength of the pedal you have the brake pedal in its heaviest configuration you're looking at 100 kilograms of pressure with that new load cell you have multiple spring rates so you've got different spring combinations that you can put in and i cover all that in the adjustments as well uh, the springs look cool and you have this really cool exposed load cell on the back the springs for the throttle, throttle and the clutch are both hidden away within the case. As I mentioned, it is, or I'm not sure if I mentioned, they are 16-bit resolution, which means you're talking about 65,000 values in the total distance of travel of the pedals. So that is a lot of resolution. Now that is when you're doing it USB standalone or plugging it into the PC with the USB. If you're gonna use the RJ45 cable and plug it directly into the base, one of the Thrustmaster bases, it knocks it down to 12-bit resolution, which is going to still be some pretty significant resolution. So that shouldn't be a big deal or a big problem or hardly noticeable at all. And again, I already mentioned it's compatible both on the PC, Xbox, and PS4. Other features that come along with the TLCM pedal set are adjustable faces. So you can adjust these things up, down, left, right, you can adjust the angle, you can actually adjust the offset as well, and I cover a lot of that in my installation video as well, and a little bit during this video just to tell you what really worked well for me. And really quickly, let's go over some of the basic measurements before we move on to actually installing them on the rig and telling you about how they work. So the overall platform is 13 and a quarter inches wide by 15 inches deep. Now this heel plate section is actually seven inches deep as well. So this is a really good sized heel plate if you think about it, 13 and a quarter by seven inches. I was able to get my heels on there no problem and operate the pedals, that worked out fantastic. Your overall height from the wheel or the pedal plate to the top of the pedals, you're looking at about nine inches tall with the actual distance from here from the, the heel plate to the top being about seven inches. So let's talk about a couple other measurements since we're on that. Number one, let's talk about the travel. The throttle pedal, you have about two and a half inches of throw from off throttle to all the way down. Another thing that I'll mention now and I'll probably mention during driving as well is right there, that end, that is sort of like a rubber. There's something rubber in there that is making it not be a metal on metal clack as I would call it. It's got a soft bump, but there's no flex. It's a very solid bump. Also notice, this is very stiff, very rigid, the pedal is. It's very smooth in its travel. I'll talk about that more while driving as well. The other thing is, there's just a hint of play left and right, but under my foot, I didn't feel that at all. Let's move to the clutch and then we're gonna come back to the brake. We'll do the same order when we talk about driving. The clutch spring is a little bit springier than the gas pedal. You can see a big difference in the amount of pull. Pretty light there. I can do that with one finger, no problem. One finger takes a lot to really pull it all the way to the end stop. So it's a stronger spring. It is linear, so is this. There's no progressive. It's the same tension from start to finish. Same tension from start to finish, just a lot firmer, about double the strength it almost feels like. All right. Um, there is no snapping point. There's no like clutch plate release point. It is just a smooth, same resistance all the way to, again, a rubber stop, not a clack of a metal on metal. Now, with the brake, right now I have the heaviest bushings on there, the heaviest springs. I do have a little preload, which I talk about a lot during my driving videos. Uh, it's a little softer spring in the middle that compresses first, giving us that much pressure pressure then we get into the heavy tr pressure anyway you're looking at about an inch and a half of travel under my foot i can't even do it right here on the table like that which is why you're going to want to bolt these down on the clutch pedal uh like the gas pedal you have about two and a half inches of travel now the face of this is actually a nice elongated gas pedal i like that quite a bit it's five inches 
by two and three eighths inches wide. It is four inches uh, tall and three and three eighths inches wide for the brake pedal and then four inches tall and two and a half inches wide for the clutch. Now with the way I've staggered them, I've been able to achieve two and seven eighths of an inch of a gap between my gas and brake, which is what I like for doing left foot braking. So that's nice. And with the pedal faces, you have multiple holes, so you can again move them left and right, up and down a little bit, change the angle. You can also change the stagger. So you can see I've actually pushed my gas and uh, my brake and clutch pedal a little bit further away from the gas pedal so that I get a little bit of brake pressure and then the gas if I'm ever gonna do any heel toe braking. So that's pretty nice. So that pretty much takes you through the pedal set. I do go into much more detail about all those adjustments and getting it dialed in for me. I also go into detail on how I can just press down on this spring. It doesn't take a lot. And then you just pull off and change the springs out for different tension springs and then put it back together again. Another feature that I didn't talk about is the calibration tool. So it's a, a calibration adjustment tool that allows you to actually adjust the linearity. So if you want this to be more than one to one on movement, like you want it to be very slow at first and then speed up at the end, the amount of curve of how the, the pressure is perceived or the distance is perceived in the case of the clutch, you can do that. You can also add a little dead zone to the top and bottom and you can change the overall strength of the brake as far as what the computer is seeing as well. So a lot of adjustment there, both on the software and a fair amount of adjustment here on the pedal set. And you again are talking about a $200 set of pedals. So I did do an unboxing video as well, which you can watch all of the details. See the smile on my face when I open up the box, but ultimately you get the pedals. They come with the soft springs installed, ready to go with everything centered spacing wise. All you need to do is install them into the rig. Along with it, there's also a drilling template, an instruction manual, a USB cable, and an RJ45 cable to go into the case if you're gonna go directly into the wheelbase, or I should say into the wheelbase. So beyond that, all you gotta do is mount them into your rig, get them calibrated, and you're up and running. So it did come with a drilling pattern. I was lucky it lined up beautifully with my RC S1 chassis. Three of the bolts were gonna be perfect. That was always gonna to need to firmly attach these to my rig. Three bolts later, they were done. I was gonna test both with the USB at 16 bit resolution, as well as with an RJ45 by plugging it into my TSXW wheel. So I did try both cable options, but pick your cable, plug them in, and you're up and running. There was a little software to work like the calibration tool. You needed to update the firmware if you were using the wheel. And again, all of that is covered in a little more detail during our installation video. But by this point, it was pretty much time to calibrate it in the game and get up and running. So I decided, how do I really want to tell you how do they work in the game? I find that at this point in 2020, almost everything we use is made for a certain level of standard. So I could break things down and I'm going to break things down into certain aspects of the gas, brake, and clutch pedal and the way they felt. But let's just talk about getting in and transitioning from very, very high-end pedals into this $200 pedal set, the Thrustmaster TLCM pedals. You would think there'd be a big learning curve. You would think, oh, it's a huge step down. It's gonna take a while to get adjusted and confident. And if you watch the first driving video, you'll notice within a matter of five laps, I was starting to get pretty aggressive. By 10 laps, I was into the 90% confidence range. And by the end of only 13 laps, I was at 96, 97% confidence in my driving ability with these pedals. What does that mean? All right, we talked about the gas pedal. I talked about it having two and a half inches of travel. That's not a ton of travel, but it was more than enough for me to be able to modulate that gas pedal. So when I think of the gas pedal and the way it moves, okay, let's talk about the gas pedal. It's really smooth. It's very smooth. There's no binding. There's no added friction beyond that spring pressure. That little bit of wiggle that you can see, you don't feel it at all under your foot. I was doing left foot braking. With this spacing of two and seven eighths, I was able to use both feet adequately, never hit toes or any of that kind of stuff, even while using shoes. The pedal is stiff for $200. This does not feel like a $200 pedal set made of a plastic case. Ultimately, within 
This arm is pedal, the face is pedal, and the track that it's mounted to is also metal. Pedal, metal, metal, pedal. The arm is metal, the face is metal. The track that it's installed into is also made of metal. It is only a plastic casing, but even this has a certain amount of robustness to it as well. So again, other feature that I really liked. That clack, when I talk about metal on metal, that metal on metal clack can be a fatigue factor when it comes to racing. Our feet are sensitive, especially if you're gonna run in socks. So it's nice to have a comfortable end stop that you can reach the end of, know you've got there, have no extra movement, and have it work out really nice. So I was very impressed with the gas pedal. The only change I can really think of really would be to add a little more spring, to add adjustable amount of spring, maybe a little bit more travel. Let's move on to the clutch pedal. The clutch pedal, again, real snappy. That amount of strength on it, it makes it really release quickly. So despite not having a pressure point or a cam action somewhere in the middle, the amount of strength is amount enough to make it really come back on you. Really give it a little bit of a clutch feeling, even though it's still just trying to mimic a clutch. Like the gas pedal, very, very little side-to-side -side movement, very rigid pedal arm being made of metal, very rigid metal track, so there is no extra flex. In fact, under the load of the brake, it actually flexed my S1 chassis more than this structure flexed, which is quite a statement right there. The clutch pedal, again, very smooth like the gas, very linear spring tension. It is one-to-one -one from start to finish. And again, two and a half inches of travel, which I'm not nearly as critical of when I'm doing the gas pedal. Now the brake. I knew from experience with just a few throws of the white springs, the ones that it came, I'm sorry, the silver springs that were in there to begin with. I knew that wasn't gonna be enough tension just from putting them on the ground. So I immediately went to the heavy duty. The other thing is I know that I like a little bit of free play in my brake pedal. I like just a little bit of soft zone for light scrubbing of the brakes. So despite using the heavy duty red springs, I did leave that inner middle silver spring and that gave this preload. So when it came to driving these on track, I was able to really lightly brush. So I did a lot of testing at Brands Hatch. And if you think about Brands Hatch, you have some very fast corners that you might need to just brush the brake a little just to set the nose to make sure you get some front end grip, but too much and all of a sudden you've caused unbalance of the car and you're gonna create understeer. It did that really well. I have this little 10 to 15% zone that I can just almost do with like the tippy toe of my shoe. Now under heavy braking, one of the beauties of a load cell, one of the reasons why it has been so necessary for Thrustmaster to create the, these pedals is for the purpose of having a load cell. With a potentiometer, your brain is trying to measure distance with your toe. And if you closed your eyes and tried to imagine how much you're moving your toe, you're probably not gonna be very accurate. However, how hard you are pressing is a lot more of an easy sensation to judge. That is what a load cell does for you. Now, instead of measuring the distance of my braking, it's how hard am I braking. When you get to a car where locking up the front brakes is easy to, to happen, it becomes critical to be able to judge that precise moment where you've pressed enough. We want threshold braking and sim racing. We want the ability to press as hard as we can right before the moment of lockup. And the moment we get lockup, the ability to back off very slightly. When you're dealing with pressure, it is a lot easier to measure that fine point. I find myself getting more in tune with the game while I'm driving and really getting it to where I can sense that moment before lockup and just not even move my foot, but release the amount of pressure that is holding the brake pedal down and preventing wheel lockup. It is hard to even describe if you've never tried it and all you've ever been on are standard Thrustmaster or Logitech pedals, anything that's a spring only based pedal set. So those are the basic breakdowns. Other things to tell you about the brake pedal, like the other two pedals, this pedal arm is rock solid rigid. There is no flex whatsoever in it. There is just a hint of side to side or twist that I did not feel under my pedal. No noises, no pops, no creaks, no anything that you didn't want to feel. Now, despite being an 
inch and a half of travel, that was plenty when using the load cell. I really liked the amount of distance. I really liked the amount of throw. I really liked the amount of pressure. It was exactly the amount of pressure that I'd want. Uh, for some people, maybe they want more. It's right on that line of where I want it to be. I can race in shoes, which for me at this point with heavy duty brake pedals is when I'm most comfortable and I can be highly accurate even with the strength of having a shoe under my foot. So when it came down to the driving itself, I think I've described the way they work. But the reason I was able to achieve so much confidence at such an early state of the game was because of how easy it was to judge what was going on. The throttle at two and a half inches was enough to be able to ease on the throttle, not just have it be an on and off switch. The clutch, admittedly, I only tested it long enough to know that I could heel toe and sure, I could, and it was springy, but I'd still like to see more cam sensation. I'd like to see a little bit more uh, uh, progressive hump that you have to get over somehow. And then the brake itself. On the light side compared to heavy duty brakes, but an outstanding load self sensation, great modulation, great light scrubbing effect. And it meant that I could charge into corners knowing that I could brake not only threshold braking in a straight line, but be able to ease back the braking all the way to apex. And that is very important when it comes to getting massive, great lap times. In addition to that, coming off the corners, having enough throttle pedal, enough smoothness, and enough resistance. It is a little bit light compared to my foot. My hand's not as strong as my foot, but it was more than adequate. And for a $200 pedal set, everything here completely blew away my expectations. So I think that tells you everything you need to know about the Thrustmaster TLCM pedal set. They are pretty decent pedals for only $200. But just to make it perfectly clear, let's break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line. Starting off with the good, that being they are the least expensive upgrade pedal set that I know of. Great price. Metal in critical areas, pedal faces, arms, internal structure. The benefit of a load cell. Great modulation, adjustable spring combinations, easy to mount, smooth pedal movement, good looking pedal set, large heel plate, USB saver on the PC, Xbox and PlayStation compatible, and the advanced calibration tool. And now on to the not so good. A little more travel in the throttle pedal would go a long way for these pedals. Could have an even heavier brake combination. And the clutch could use a release sensation. And now on to the bottom line. I really didn't have any cons. I don't even feel right in naming the three that I had. Yes, I could want more pedal throw, but to be honest with you, that's plenty. I could want a stronger brake but for $200, what do you really, really expect? And the clutch cam action, I don't really do a lot of stick shifting for me. It's not a big deal. And even for those who do use the shifter, I'm not sure that that is something that has been designed into the Sims well enough to be critical. It is a good springy clutch. Most of those features that I've asked for are the kind of features that you'd expect from a $400, a $500, $1,000, a $1,500, $2,000 pedal set. They're not the kind of things that I'd even expect from a $200 pedal set. To be honest with you, $200 is barely even enough money to consider itself an upgrade, yet this is absolutely the most substantial, the least expensive upgrade that you could make to a Thrustmaster wheel set, no matter what. So if you have a Thrustmaster wheelbase and pedals, chances are I think your wheelbase is outstanding and awesome, but these pedals are going to change sim racing for you. Now are these for everybody? No. If you're a really high-end guy, chances are these would be a great backup set of pedals should anything go wrong with your $2,000 pedal set, but if you're a high-end guy, a $200 pedal set, $200 pedal set just isn't going to cut it anyway. 
But if you're out there and you've been struggling and you've been wondering the difference between you and the better guys, sometimes it comes down to braking. Braking, the brake pedal, is the most important component we have in my mind. It's more important than how good is your force feedback. So for me, the order of importance when it comes to sim gear is having at least a load cell or hydraulic brake and then working your way up. And I'm not saying you need thousands of dollars. $200 will get you a load cell brake pedal that breaks like some of the best pedals out there on the market. So I need to applaud Thrustmaster on curing the Achilles heel, the thing that has made it hard for me to give them the 100% recommendation when people are asking me for advice. It's like, yes, they're great wheels, but you might want to consider a different pedal set. Now I can steer them in the right direction. You can get a Thrustmaster wheel. You can get compatible pedals. You can do it in 16-bit with the USB, or you can do it right into the wheel and maintain the compatibility with your Xbox or PlayStation. Again, at $200, it's really hard for me to have anything negative to say. And for $200, the base was more robust. The weight was more substantial. The arms were more significant. And the brake pedal, the load cell, worked better and was more adjustable than I even expected it to be for that price point. So if you want more details on this, you can get that at thrustmaster.com. That information should be out there as of now. They became available on Amazon store as of now. I have a link to that in the description of my show. And please check out our other videos with me driving them for the first time ever. Check out the videos of me uh, installing them and adjusting them and dealing with that, that uh, uh, calibration software. You can see the unboxing and all the moments that we've had with these Thrustmaster TLCM pedals. But that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to thumbs up if you enjoy what we do. Thumbs down if you don't, but send me an email and tell me what we can do better. And of course, share this video with your friends so we can continue to grow. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.